This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 122. In this episode, I will show you more than 41 new features in 15 different Google Apps. So make sure all your apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. Let's start the episode by talking about YouTube and here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first change is in the home feed. Now when you start scrolling, the app bar automatically disappears giving you this edge to edge scrolling experience which I really like. And here's how the show hide animation looks when you scroll up and down. Also, the app bar is now shorter, making the icons closer to the edge. And this is one of the things that Google is rolling out to all apps. The second change is the YouTube recap. For the first time ever, Google started to create recaps for the normal YouTube apps, similar to the ones we have in YouTube Music. And here is how it looks. It will show you some nice graphics and the animations to let you know what type of videos you usually watch on YouTube. And I found it to be a lot more fun when compared to YouTube Music because it tells you a lot about your personality. And at any given point, you have the ability to save the current image to your library like this or share it immediately from here. At the top, you have the ellipses, which will allow you to learn more, report something or delete the recap. There is a background music, which is one of the top songs I have in my YouTube music recap, which you can also go to when you scroll all the way. It will give you a quick button that takes you to the YouTube music recap as well. The next app we have is YouTube music. And here I'm going to show you six new changes. The first change is under the liked music playlist. And now you have the ability to filter the songs by genre and here you can see all types of music under your playlist you can choose up to two filters at a time and I found this feature to be very useful especially if you have a lot of liked music the second change is the new tune button in mixes so for example when you go to the create a mix section and choose any of the available options like this one for example here you will see a new tune button that will allow you to modify it a little bit for your taste by searching for other artists or genres to add to the mix. The rest of the changes are in the now playing screen which got a complete revamp. To me, this is the perfect layout and I hope Google will stick to it. First, the song and video switcher is back again to the top instead of having it in the actions carousel. And to me, that gives two advantages. First, it's easier to find. Plus this empty space at the top is now more useful instead of cramming everything in one place. Then we have a much bigger carousel, which is also shifted towards the top. And to me, that makes a lot more sense for three reasons. First, it's much easier to see. It's easier to tap on the buttons because of the bigger touch target. Plus, having these buttons under the song name looks aesthetically more pleasing. The progress bar is also back again to the same old slim design with a cursor, which makes it easier to know exactly where to put your finger to seek forward or backward and then come the media controls which are now more reachable and lastly the three taps combo at the bottom is back again so you can quickly access your queue from here instead of swiping up like before the lyrics page is also more accessible instead of having it under the carousel and finally the related tap when you look at the new design as a whole you will see that it makes a lot more sense first every corner is now used nothing is hidden so you don't need to think where is this or that option plus the bigger buttons makes it easier easier to deal with. Now let's talk about Google Photos and here I'm going to show you three new changes. The first change is the comeback of an option that disappeared for a while after the release of the new photo editor. So now when you edit any of the photos and then go to the framing page, you will see that the perspective crop is back again so you can edit your photos like this. The second change is under the albums page. When you open any of the albums, you will see much bigger font. The buttons got redesigned and the chip at the bottom is also much bigger. And here is how it looks when you start scrolling. Let me show you another album over here with the play button at the top. So as you see, the design looks much better now. The third and last change you will find in the viewer. If you have any photos or videos added to either shared or normal albums, now you can see its name at the top in a chip, which will allow you to jump to this album right away. Let me pause for a minute to thank you for the time you gave to me to learn about these software features, because time is my biggest enemy while making these videos. I have to be fast and as detailed as possible to meet your expectations. But with the growing number of software features every single day, things are not as easy as it used to be. So I needed a time management tool, but the number of tools available out there is crazy. 
After a long time of research, I ended up using a couple of tools in addition to my email and the calendar comp. But the more the tools, the more the effort and time needed to keep things in line. So what if I told you you can merge all of this into one easy to use tool? Meet Akiflow, the one app for tasks and calendars, powered by AI. First, you can link up to 32 services including your Gmail or Outlook email. So if you already invested your time in any of these tools, you don't need to start over. You can simply get access to all of them in one place. To show you how it works, I connected all the services I used to Akiflow. By this, all the tasks I added manually, the ones synchronized from other services, and my flagged emails are all on the left, while my calendar is on the right. Using the time blocking technique, I can just drag and drop tasks and emails to my calendar to assign a time block for each one. Now I'm on top of everything, and know exactly what I need to finish and when by just looking at one screen. You can also download the AkiFlow app on your iPhone or Android to manage things on the go or add tasks once they come to your mind to avoid losing track or forgetting about them. Another cool trick is the ability to create tasks and events by just emailing them to aki at akiflow.com or you can BCC this email address in your replies to seamlessly create tasks for these specific emails without the need to flag them later. If you want to try AkiFlow right now, use the link in the description or the pinned comment. And now let's get back to the video. Next, Google Chrome. And here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first one is the ability to pin shortcuts to your Chrome homepage. All you need to do is to tap and hold on the shortcut and you will see the pin option over here. Tapping on it will show a small pin icon next to the shortcut name. And you can also add more shortcuts by tapping on the add new button. The second change is a new killer feature added to the desktop version. Now you have the ability to open two tabs in a split screen view and it works exactly the same as if you are using an Android phone. To activate the feature, right click on any of the open tabs and you will see a new option called new split view with current tab. Or right click on any of the items in the web page and you will see a similar option called open link in a split view. Either way, Chrome will automatically split the screen showing you the two tabs side by side. Once done, you will get a handle in the middle to resize the windows and you can double click on it to swap places. When you look at the tab switcher, you will see that the two tabs are now showing as one item with an X button for each one. Google also added another X button for each tab at the bottom right corner. With the split view activated, you will see a brand new button next to the address bar that will give you all the options you might need, like separate the views, close left, close right, and reverse views. Plus you have the ability to right click on this button and pin it to your toolbar. In this case, you will get the ability to immediately start a split screen view without the need to right click on the tab, which is a slightly easier. And lastly, all the options available under the split view button are also accessible by right clicking on any of the pairs. To me, this feature is a game changer. And as a pro tip, you can pin any of these pairs to the tab switcher, same as the individual tabs, which is a nice touch. The next app we have is Gemini, and here I'm gonna show you four new changes. The first change I'm gonna show you is a killer feature. Take a look at what happens when I trigger Gemini. Now I can use the same circle to search gesture to attach whatever I see on the screen to the prompt and start my query. This feature will save you a lot of hassle. First, you no longer need to take a screenshot and attach it later or start a screen sharing session with live. All of these steps are no longer needed and you can immediately inquire about whatever you see on the screen with a very simple gesture which is impressive. You will also notice that Google updated the starting animation and now it goes full screen, not only around the text box like before, and to me, it looks a lot better. The third change is in Gemini Live. Now we have a mute switch instead of the pause button like before. And the reason why the mute switch is better because if you don't want Gemini to pick the words of someone else talking in the background, you can simply finish your command, mute the microphone, then wait for the answer, and instead of pausing the session. And lastly, the updated model switcher. Now we get access to Gemini 3, which has three different models, either fast, thinking, or pro, and the same applies to the free users, but the only difference is in the number of tokens. The next app we have is Google Maps, and here I'm gonna show you four new changes. The most exciting feature in Google Maps is the Gemini integration, which I only got on my 
17 Pro Max so far, but it's also expected to come to Android very soon. So let me show you how it works. So I would start the navigation to a specific place and then start asking Gemini some questions about my route. Can you check if there is any road closures or accidents reported? I can confirm that the navigation system is showing a heavy delay on your route, which is often due to congestion caused by incidents. I don't see any general road closures that are active right now. The map app uses real-time data, so the incident you just reported should already be factored into the route's current heavy delay. Sorry, I don't understand. Can you pick the route with the least amount of traffic regardless how much longer it takes? Okay, I'm showing you the route alternatives now. You should see them on the map, including their traffic conditions and estimated travel times. Sorry, I don't understand. What's the ETA if I started my trip at 8.30 p.m.? If you started your trip at 8.30 p.m., your estimated time of arrival at Aspen Commercial Tower would be 9.13 p.m. Sorry, I didn't understand. As you saw, Gemini will allow you to ask more complicated questions, which wasn't the case with Google Assistant. The second change is the ability to create a custom display name and photo for reviews if you don't want to share your real data. And to achieve this, head over to the profile menu, then tap on your profile, then edit profile, and you will see a new checkbox over here called use a custom display name and picture for posting. Once you check the box, it will allow you to do this. The third change is the ability to access the 360 view not only from this box, but you will also find it in the directions overlay card. And here is how it works. And lastly, I got this new banner in the directions card to learn more about the new power saving mode of Google Maps on the Pixel 10 models. Next, Google Messages. And here I'm gonna show you four new changes. The first change is the redesigned links and YouTube videos previews. And instead of showing the link Link, then the video thumbnail, then the title and description. Now we have a simplified view that will only show you the thumbnail and title. And here's how the web link preview looks. The second change is the new bouncy animation you get when you expand the photo sharing card. Not only this, but the camera viewfinder looks slightly different as well. Now we have the photo and video tabs inside the viewfinder instead of showing underneath it like before. Last but not least, when you select photos to share, you will see some design tweaks. First, the bigger and separated send button. The delete button got replaced with an X and the borders around the items are more prominent. Before jumping to the next app, if you like my wallpapers, go ahead and download the wallpapers by in-depth thick reviews app, which will give you access to tons of exclusive wallpapers that will make your smartphone look impressive. Plus you have the ability to download any of them locally on the device. So you can apply your operating system wallpaper effects on any of them, which will make it look even better. If you are interested, you will find Google Play Store download link in the description. Next, Gcam. And here I'm gonna show you three new changes. The first change is the redesigned shadows and the brightness sliders. If you have the feature enabled under settings, so when you go to settings and then activate the quick access controls, when you tap to focus, you get the shadows and the brightness sliders. And as you see, they look slightly different than before. And for reference, here is how it looks side by side with the previous version. First, the icons are different plus the sliders swapped places and now we have the shadows at the top and the brightness at the bottom plus the bars are now shaded to let you know in which direction you need to move the cursor to brighten or darken the image. The second change is the redesigned countdown timer font and animation and here is how it looks now. And lastly, the camera coach got some visual tweaks. On the left, you will see a screenshot from the previous version. And here's the latest one. You will notice here that this section is now showing on top of the rescan button. The arrow is now called show all and the text used in the get inspired box is also different and more descriptive. Other than this, both work exactly the same. Now let's talk about Gboard, which got seven new changes. The most exciting change in Gboard is the ability to edit the clipboard content. All you need to do is to tap and hold on the item and you will see the edit option over here. Once done, just tap on save and it will be updated. The second change is the redesigned settings page with full Material 3 expressive redesign. As you see, all the items are now separated. Plus, when you go inside any of the menus, 
the toggles got updated and things are organized differently. We also got a brand new menu item under settings called the translate that will allow you to turn off the auto translate feature of Gboard when your pixels live translate feature is activated or you can turn it off only for specific languages when it comes to the emojis we got multiple tweaks the first one is the bigger previews when you take a look at the screenshot on the left you can see that the last three rows are completely visible and a small part of the fourth row without scrolling while currently only the last two rows are completely visible also the nav bar at the bottom got a complete revamp all the items are much smaller plus it supports the material 3 expressive design language so the selected tab turns into an oval shape while the unselected ones are rounded rectangles. And if your Pixel phone runs Android 16 QPR3 Beta 1, it should support the Unicode 17.0 and the Emoji 17.0, which will add these eight new emojis to the list. With QPR3, Google also tweaked some of the already existing designs to match iPhone. And here are some of the examples shared by 9to5Google. Here we have the before and after and the iOS in the center. And as you see, they look very similar. Plus a lot more other changes. So I'm going to leave this article link in the description if you want to check it out. Now let's end this video by talking about the apps that only got one new change. And I will start with Keep Notes. Now when you create a reminder in Keep Notes, it automatically appears in Google Tasks. And when you mark the task as complete, it will also reflect in Keep Notes. Google Tasks also got its own new feature. When you create a new task like this one, for example, and then open it, you will see a brand new option called Add Deadline on top of the normal reminder. But this one will only give you the option to add a date without specifying the time. In Google Contacts, when you create a new record, now you get a quick access to the favorites button so you can immediately add the contact to your favorites without the need to save it first. In Google Play Store, now you get the ability to use your Play Points to purchase gift cards from some retail stores and I found Starbucks, Target, Sephora, Uber Eats, and Adidas. Moving to the Google app, when you play YouTube videos from the Discover feed, you will get a brand new screen that looks very similar to the YouTube app, giving you most of the functionalities. Plus you have a tab at the bottom to explore related videos. And when you dismiss this card, it will show you a chip at the bottom saying swipe up to explore. Tapping on it will expand the card one more time. And the same applies to the YouTube shorts. And here is how it looks. Here is the player and you can swipe up to explore more. In the files app, the document scanner got redesigned and it now supports Material 3 Expressive. So let me show you a quick example by scanning this photo. So as you see, all the buttons are now bigger and they are using different shapes that we got used to with the Material 3 Expressive. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new changes I wanted to show you in Google Apps. Please drop me a comment or reach me out on social media if you spotted any new feature in Google Apps to include in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.